Now turn to section three. Section three. You will hear Tom and Danny, two students, talking with their professor about the assignment. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Professor Tomlinson, may Annie and I please quickly ask you a few questions about the reflective journal assignment? It's just that we're a bit confused as to what you want us to include and discuss. Yes, of course. What are you having trouble with? Well, everything really. To start with, what should be included first in the reflective journal? Perhaps suggestions from others? No, no. Firstly, you should include the study goals you set yourself at the beginning of the module. This section should have been discussed in some detail towards the beginning of the course by Professor May. You should be able to find her suggestions on the slides she has provided the class online. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Could I also trouble you to take a brief look at my bibliography and footnotes? I feel like they're missing something. Most of our friends' bibliographies are longer. Well, looking at this, Annie, I can see that you have used a wide range of resources, which shows that you have made effective use of communication technology. As far as I can tell, you need not make any changes to this. Although you might want to double check that your referencing complies with the Harvard referencing style regulations. Oh, I'm very surprised you've said that. Thank you. Now I can set my mind at ease. Tom, you said you wanted to ask the professor about the achievement section. Ah、oh, yes, professor. In the assignment guidelines, we are asked to introduce and elaborate on our biggest achievement in the past, saying which skills we learned in the process. And how these skills can be transferred to various different future careers. The only problem is that I don't know what my greatest achievement actually is. I've only ever worked as a waiter in a hotel restaurant during the summer holidays from university. If you worked as a waiter in a hotel restaurant, you're bound to have worked with other waiters as part of a team. Would you say that during your time as a waiter, you developed any leadership skills? Yes, well, I suppose I was asked to become the team leader of the food and beverage department, but that's hardly an achievement. You might not think so, but if you write that you were offered the position of the team leader, it shows a lot more about your character. For example, that you're charismatic and work well in a high-pressure situation. I never would have thought to write that down. Thank you. I guess I should start listening to others more often. Annie, do you have any more questions, or are you ready to go back to the library? Yeah, I think I've got everything I need. Thank you very much, Professor Tomlinson. That was really helpful. I'm actually starting to look forward to writing this now, and it should be a really useful exercise to prepare us for writing CVs and applying for jobs. It's shocking how bad I am at identifying my strengths and weaknesses. Professor Tomlinson has shown me that I definitely need to start displaying some self-awareness. Yeah, Tom, you really do. You're always so modest. Modesty is great until it comes to applying for jobs. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions twenty-seven to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-seven to thirty. Oh no! I forgot to ask the professor about the section on identifying the skills gained through different activities. 
Do you remember? When it asks you, for example, whether writing an essay develops your study skills or your independent learning and so on. Oh goodness, we really should have asked him that. I've been having trouble with it too. It just seems like such a pointless task. What do you reckon the answers are? Hmm, I think writing an essay might be a way of identifying and resolving a problem, because you have to state the problem in the introduction and then solve it. I'm not so sure about taking exams. I thought they were supposed to develop lots of different skill sets. If I really had to choose, I'd say that taking exams enables you to become more confident in yourself. Do you agree? Maybe. I really don't know either. What do you think about the last two, making class notes and presentation notes? Oh, it's so difficult. I think making class notes has to be a way of becoming a more independent learner, because you yourself decide what the important information is and learn it. That reminds me, I find taking presentation notes is a disaster. The professors speak much too quickly, and I write much too slowly. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.